Hello, my name is Matt. I'm the Youth Programs Coordinator for Thrive Matt Sue. Um, making this video from home today because COVID has closed down daycare again. <laughs> and uh, meeting with a friend, uh, Don Paulson is the Matt Sue Director for Beacon Hill. Um, Don, can you please tell us a little bit about your role with the organization? Yeah, I've been with Beacon Hill since 2015 and I oversee our programs here in Matsu, um, our Safe Families for Children, and our fam we opened a family support center in 2020 and um, do some work with Heart Gallery here. Perfect. We are uh, at Thrive are very grateful for Beacon Hill's partnership. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, Beacon Hill as an organization? Yeah. Our mission is to serve Alaska's children in foster care and those at risk of entering foster care. And our dream is to see all children in our community loved and well cared for in healthy homes. We started in 2009 as just a group of individuals um, coming together to anonymously bless families financially. And that, that grew. And in 2014, we stepped into the area of child welfare and we approached the board, approached the Office of Children's Services and said, what can we do to help you? Um, they were pretty floored. and. Uh, said that they needed help with uh, visitation. Um, and so that began our journey with um, child welfare and partnering with um, other child welfare organizations. Um, we then partnered with a nationwide organization called Safe Families for Children to go upstream and do prevention work. And another brought another nationwide um, model to Alaska when o OCS came to us and said, hey, we need help with um, recruiting adoptive homes. And so we brought the national model of Heart Gallery um, to Alaska. Wow. <clears throat> you guys are very busy and we're very grateful for the work you guys are doing. Um, when we talked right before the interview, you, you, we talked a little bit about the distinction between um, fostering children through OCS uh, versus becoming a host family uh, for Beacon Hills Prevention Program, Safe Families for Children. Can you elaborate a little bit about that distinction? Yeah. So um, Safe Families for Children is a prevention um, upstream uh, movement of hospitality. And so we have volunteer host families that open their home temporarily to care for children. These host families are thoroughly vetted, um, background checked and screened, trained, um, but there's no uh, stipend or reimbursement for their services. They're completely voluntary. Um, there's no money exchanged and they, um, they're not uh, a, a licensed foster home with the state of Alaska. So the, those are our volunteer host families. And then um, being a foster parent with the state of Alaska, um, they have their own licensing uh, procedures and application program. And Beacon Hill is separate. We're a privately funded nonprofit. So those are some of the differences. Um, the practical application of it is that um, kids with uh, state families for children um, have not entered into the foster care system or hopefully reaching them before abuse and neglect takes place and that um, those hostings generally last much longer. They're very temporary, sometimes just a night, sometimes um, up to a couple weeks. But um, with foster care, um, the courts are involved and it's a lot longer process. So typically foster placements um, last months um, and into years. So those are some of the the key distinctions. Gotcha. Super important work. Um, <clears throat> your recent Facebook post mentioned that there's a severe shortage of foster parents in Alaska. Can you explain what's contributing to the shortage and how people can help? <clears throat> yeah, we um, are seeing a huge shortage in that um, we're having a hard time placing kids. There's not enough foster homes that, are, that have openings and availability um, and capacity to take kids in. I think a lot of the contributing factors really are around the pandemic. It's added additional stressors on families, um, uncertainty of childcare, and, um, and schools being opened um, adds additional stress to an already difficult role as a foster parent to care for kids that um, have experienced trauma and to work in, be a part of a system that has its challenges. Um, and so we're excited about the work of Rock Matsu and our partnerships with Thrive that are addressing some of the larger systemic um, changes that need to be made, um, but that takes time. And so foster parents often have a real lack of support um, to uh, surrounding them to help them overcome. And this is really a community problem. Um, and so 
we would encourage anybody that's interested in learning more about becoming a foster parent to go to acrf.org. That um, stands for Alaska Center for Resource Families. And they're the contracted um, training um, licensee arm of the state of Alaska. And so they have, um, they'll help you walk through those next steps um, of learning more and becoming a licensed foster parent. <clears throat> Perfect. And can you elaborate on other ways that people can support the work of, of Beacon Hill and Safe Families for Children? Yeah, if, if being, becoming a foster parent isn't um, a, the right fit for you um, and you can't commit um, a year, months or years to a, um, a child or a family, I encourage everybody to do something. Uh, so if maybe becoming a Safe Families host home is the right fit for you. Um, you can open your home temporarily and be part of that prevention piece. Um, with Safe Families for Children, we also have family coaches. Those coaches come alongside that placing parent that's facing a crisis and walks that crisis with them, maybe connects them to some resources, um, gives them encouragement and support. Uh, Safe Families for Children also has what we call family friends. Family friends help with um, babysitting for the host family, giving meals or rides, um, tangible goods, uh, food, or a... Um, Maybe you have a crib in your in your shed that you could um, loan to a host family while they care for a child. So there's lots of ways to get involved in the prevention work of state families for children. Um, and then here in Matsu, we opened our Matsu Family Support Center uh, back in 2020. A um, little bit difficult getting it off the ground um, during the pandemic, but it is open and operational. It is a home-like setting for kids in foster care to spend quality, meaningful um, family contact with their parents. Um, and that's so important to um, their reunification journey. And so um, we have what we call a role of family contact supporter. And that's someone that says, I would love to um, come alongside a family that's working towards reunification and supervise their family contact, their time together. Most of the time families get one hour a week, um, which is just not enough. Um, if your kids were in your care, you'd want to see them a lot more than one hour a week. Um, and so we are looking for volunteers that would be willing to get trained and screened and step into that role and walk with a family and help supervise contact for them. Uh, we're also looking for those that would support foster families um, with maybe um, a meal or some, some goods as they get set up with a new placement or um, some respite. So there's lots of ways to support foster families through uh, Beacon Hill, as well as uh, we're looking for center caretakers that will come to our family support center here, help do deep cleaning and sanitizing of toys and keeping it well organized um, as families come in and out and use the space. And then of course, you can always support the work we do by donating, um, donating your time, donating um, goods, snacks for the family support center, um, consumable items that we use up um, and then through um, financially donating and supporting you can go to beaconhillak.com and um, give online. Perfect well I'm going to include all of these links um, in the uh, the notes on this video and so just want to encourage everybody to, to plug in and do what you can uh, the work that Beacon Hill and Safe Families for Children are doing is so vital uh, to the health and wellness of our community and Again, Thrive just wants to express our gratitude for the work, Dawn, that you are doing, um, the Matsu team, the, you know, the, the bigger Beacon Hill family um, that's doing in Alaska. And, and so just we just want to express our gratitude uh, for what you guys are doing and, uh, and, and our encouragement to anybody that is on the fence about getting involved uh, to plug in and, and do what you can for this uh, situation. Um, Dawn, is there anything that you'd like to add? Yeah, we can, we can all do something. There's something for everybody, um, a way for you to plug in and uh, we can all do something and together we can do a lot. So I encourage you to get involved. Absolutely. So thank you so much. Um, it's been a thank pleasure talking me. with you today. Thanks for having me.